to church. Would you stand with me this morning? Uh, Joe and I have just been back from the conference, just uh, just sensing God's presence. We've had an incredible prayer meeting. Let me encourage you, if you can get here a little bit earlier on a Sunday morning, the presence of God has been flowing already. Um, just to let you know, we had such a great prayer meeting on Tuesday. We were only doing it once a month. We're going to go every other week now. I want you to put in your diary, mark that as an event to be here. There was over, well over 20 of us here. Fill the minor hall. Uh, you who are here will know the presence of God was here. We're seeking his presence, aren't we? Because it's his presence that changes things. It's his presence that changes people. And when we get the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's, it goes beyond what we can manufacture or even do ourselves. And, and we need him this morning, don't we? So would you lift your hands to heaven? We're going to pray, ask God to visit this place this morning. I don't know why you've come, but I've come to get more of the Lord and for him to change my heart and change my thinking and just energize me for this week as we witness to people and tell them about his love. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray this morning that heaven would come down in this place, Lord. You said if you were lifted up, you draw us to yourself. You draw all men, in fact, Lord. So as we worship you, we know we're not just affecting our, the spiritual climate around this church, but we're, we're affecting the spiritual climate of this town. And Lord, we want Sajdi to know that you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So pour out your spirit, we pray today, as we worship you together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship the Lord, shall we? What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I Jesus, 
For he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What wonderful words in that, that chorus. My life is wholly bound to his. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Through Christ Hallelujah. in me, Hallelujah. the hope of glory. Mm. It's just amazing. Mm. The faithfulness of Jesus. You know, I've really been dwelling on this thought, the faithfulness of Jesus. Or the awesomeness of God's faithfulness to me. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing that I can do. It's all about what he has done on the cross. Yeah. Our risen Lord. Hallelujah. The faithfulness. Get that this morning. Thank you, Jesus. It's the faithfulness of Christ. Thank you, Lord. The faithfulness of Christ. Mm. You, you can't do anything to make God love you any more mm. than what he's already demonstrated to you. In that whilst we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful is your name in this place. Wonderful are your ways in this place. Powerful is your love in this place. Lord, we pray that you would just glorify the name of our Jesus. In such an amazing way, Lord. Something that we've never seen. Moved by your Holy Spirit this morning in ways that we have never even thought of. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Awesome God, you 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Awesome God, King forever. Bless your name. Every breath, every breath. We'll praise you, King of kings. Lord of us, every breath will praise you, 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 awesome God, awesome God. Bless his name, folks. Give him praise. Hallelujah. For all that he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are bound in him this morning. Bless the Lord. We are in Christ this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. His faithfulness is forever. Because he is our cornerstone. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My hope is built. On nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that verse again. My hope. This is a reality we have. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus. We. 
he shall come when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless i stand before the throne, Christ alone, on the storm, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord. Lord last verse together through the storm some of you have been going through some storms well you know what Jesus is in the boat with us you know what he said to the disciples fear not it's me don't be afraid sometimes we get ourselves wound up as we get into situations that seem to overwhelm us but this morning we can declare with all the faith in our hearts that Jesus is with us and he's promised never to leave us or forsake us so even when the waves are crashing when the situations are around us seem un insurmountable, God is with us this morning. If God is for us, then let's declare who can be against us. Let's sing that last verse together, shall we? Hallelujah. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Righteousness alone, for bless I stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same. Take your seats. Thank you guys for leading us in worship. Some more time in a moment just to raise the name of Jesus again. Jesus is our message, isn't he? He's the cause of our singing. And now we've got a guitar that's out of tune. Bless the Lord. <laughs> uh, Tracy's just asked me to tell you that the crocheting group is starting this week and it's Wednesday at 7 o'clock and it's at the Beaches. Wednesday. Wednesday, Bates thinks it's Thursday, his wife is kicking him, it's Wednesday, <laughs> bless the Lord, it's good isn't it? Well, we've been to the conference and of course, you know, it's great for preachers because you get to pick up some stories, don't you? And um, there was one pastor telling me, he asked his assistant pastor to, um, to cover for him while he was on holiday. So he said, there's two things I need you to do apart from drop me off at the airport, which I'd be really grateful for and pick me back up again. He said, would you look after my cat and my mom? 
And um, he said, of course, Pastor, that's no problem. And um, he said, what I'll do, he said, while I'm away, I'll ring you three times. And he said, just tell me the truth. He said, I just need to know what's going on at home. He said, you won't offend me, whatever's happening. He said, the cat's a terror. He said, my mom just needs some help. So it's all good. So off he went on his holidays. He rings three times. Three times the assistant pastor tells him everything is fine. But when he picks him up from the airport, he said, pastor, I have to tell you, your cat's died. He said, my cat's died. He said, your pastoral gift. He said, he's terrible. He said, now let me tell you how that should have gone. He said, what you should have said to me when I rang you the first time is pastor, the cat's wandered off. Then the next time I rung, you should have said, Pastor, the cat is on the garage roof. And then the next time, he's like, actually, Pastor, we couldn't get it off the garage roof, and it actually fell, in, and we've taken it to the vets. And then when you told me it died, I wouldn't have been surprised. And he said, and now it's my mother. She said, he's on the garage, she's on the garage roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Bless the Lord. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Yeah, we've been talking about breakthrough haven't we and I I, I want to draw that back again into the ministry of Jesus because if there ever was anybody that walked the face of this earth that changed people's situations in a moment it was Jesus wasn't he breakthrough moments for the deaf breakthrough moments for the blind breakthrough moments for the cripples breakthrough moments for those that had even died and Jesus raised them back from the dead and so I want to take you to this set of verses as we Look at a man that is in real trouble. I want you to know today there is nobody beyond God's redemption. Sometimes you look at people and you say, could God, is God able to change that kind of person? The answer is yes. God is able. So Mark chapter 5 and verse 1. They went across the lake to the region of Gennesaret. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man was there with an impure spirit and he came to him out of the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore. Not even with chains, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he had torn the chains apart and broken the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in and the hills, he would cut, uh, cut himself and cry out. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want me to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. And Jesus said to him, come out of the man, you impure spirit. And then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. He begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd was about 2,000 in number. They rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Let's just pray. Father, would you just open our hearts this morning to receive your word. Lord, I thank you for those that are here in person. Thank you for those that will be watching now online and those that will be watching later online. I pray that your word will profoundly change our lives. Father, let us know the truth this morning and let that truth set us free in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a spiritual world that is operating that is invisible to the naked eye. What you see on the television screens, what you experience in your day-to-day -day life. There is something more. There is a spiritual element to the natural world that we have. We talked a little bit about it last week when we talked about the angels of God ascending and descending when we talked about the story of Jacob. But there are spiritual realms that are in operation. There are the angels of God that are working and ministering to us who are the heirs of salvation. But there are also demonic forces and strongholds that are in place. And as the people of God, we really need to understand that there is something going on beyond what we can see. Have you ever walked down a street and felt the atmosphere change? You become uneasy or dis-ease has come into your heart. Because there is something that has changed. It's, it's nothing that you can see with your natural eye, but it's something that you know in your spiritual man. Now, a long time ago, uh, we went to see my sister in Northern Ireland and uh, we took the kids, they were only small at the time, I don't even think Joel was with us, and uh, we went off to Londonderry. Uh, it was a bit of a distance from our sisters, and I, we, I remember walking around thinking, this is like Dudley, but in Ireland, that's what I thought to myself. And um, so we went there, but as we went down a side street, I, I remember feeling like, um, like, like eyes were watching me, there was nobody there. But there was something of a spiritual 
atmosphere. And I, I, I believe that the enemy wants to create strongholds. Have you had David, anybody ever walk into your house and suddenly the atmosphere has changed for the worse? Because there, there are spiritual realms that are in operation and the enemy creates strongholds. As you read the Bible, you'll see that, you know, we are not just in a natural battle, but there are spiritual wars that are raging that we cannot see with our natural eyes, but we need to perceive and know with our spiritual eyes. And I think if there's anything that we needed in our day and generation in church is that gift from the Holy Spirit of to discern spirits, to know what spirit something is of, you know. We need to understand, is it me? Is it the Lord? Or is it the enemy? Because we're not, the scripture says, fighting flesh and blood. Sometimes you think you've got a real issue with your boss or you've got a real issue in the family or you've got a real issue with, with, with something else. But I want to tell you the enemy has created strongholds. And I believe this morning as we minister God's word and we pray for people later, strongholds are going to be broken in the name of Jesus. We have to trust and know that God is in control and he is bigger than any stronghold that is built against us. Because we're not fighting flesh and blood, are we? So he went across the lake to the region of Gennesaret. There, there was a man, as he got out the boat, who with an impure spirit, he came from the tombs to meet him. You see, all of us, and listen online as well, for many of you are watching, you've still not made a commitment to Christ, and you've still not made a commitment to come to church. So as I've told you before, get in your car and get here. But the truth is, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is not one of us that is pure, holy. There's none of us that can attain to the wonderful status of Jesus Christ. That's why we worship him this morning, because there is no one like him. We've all sinned. We've all messed it up. But the glorious gospel is this, that even though we were sinners, Steve's already said to us, Christ has died for us, and he's put us in right standing with God and puts us in robes of righteousness that we do not deserve. But the truth is that we are all sinners. All mankind has fallen. But there's something beyond that. There, is, there are times when spirits actually become squatters so it's not just that we've got a broken human spirit with sin there is demonic activity in the lives of people and I want to tell you this morning in this church we're not frightened of the demonic because it has to go in the name of Jesus whoever is bound whoever has got stuff that they shouldn't have in them if they come here we're going to set you free not because we can set you free we have got nothing to set you free with but we have got the gifts of the Holy Spirit and we've got the name of Jesus and we've got the authority that he's given to us. And so you need to understand sometimes it's not just people are sinful, but sometimes people are driven by evil spirits. And I, I, I don't want to even talk about that any further because I don't want to give any glory to the enemy this morning. We want to give all the glory to Jesus. This man lived in tombs and no one could bind him. Not even with chains. He often had been chained hand and foot and tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. And it says that he cut himself with those stones. Have you noticed it's so horrible when people self-harm? And this man was so broken, he wasn't even bothered that he was naked anymore. In his wretchedness, he was just in such a state that he was even slashing his wrists and his arms with stones and cutting himself. But I need you to know this, that Jesus can reach into that darkness. That Jesus can reach into that brokenness. That the Son of God who laid his veins open on the cross did so that people don't have to live in bondage like that anymore. And as we put our faith and trust in Jesus, he will set you free. There's somebody watching me right now and you're self-harming. I'm telling you, it's time to stop. It's time to turn to Jesus. He's going to set you free. The pain that you're feeling now will be no more if you will turn yourself over to the living God. It's not going to be easy, but you need to follow him. Take up the cross, the scripture says, and follow him. You know, I want to say this really, really clearly, just in case some of you don't fully get and understand this. As believers this morning, we cannot be possessed by the enemy. We have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. And I, I don't believe that you can have bitter water and sweet water coming out the same spring. Does anybody? I believe this morning that when we are truly born again of the Spirit of God, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus and his completed work on the cross, 
something takes place. The scripture says we pass from death to life. There is a spiritual birth. And what happens is we were empty, but all of a sudden the Spirit of God comes into our lives, reveals Jesus to us, and puts a deposit upon our lives of an inheritance that is to come. Isn't that wonderful? We have Jesus on the inside of us this morning. And therefore, if Jesus is on the inside of you, the enemy cannot be in you. So I don't want you to worry this morning, because some, some Christians go walking around and go, I, th- I think I might have a demon. You haven't got a demon, you've got the Holy Ghost. Just shake yourself this morning and say, greater is he that is in me than anything that can come against me. But I do want to say this. Although I don't believe that we can be possessed by the enemy because we belong to Jesus now. We're, we're safe in his hands, aren't we, this morning? Some of you need, really need to know that you are safe. Come hell or high water, he's got you. But there, there is an issue that sometimes we feel under attack, don't we? That's not coming from the inside because Jesus comes to give us life and life to the full. But John 10.10 10 tells us very, very clearly, it's the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And there may be stuff going on in your life right now, and, uh, and, you, and you say, well, it, it could be, is this demonic? It, well, it could be. I, I believe that the enemy would bring strongholds. He'll, he'll bring strongholds. Sometimes he, 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 will, he will play with your mind as well. There's a battle going on for our thinking. That's why the scripture says that we need to be in the word so that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Our hearts can be saved, but our minds can be thinking a whole lot of other things. How, how many of you have, know that you know that you know that you're saved and that you're safe in God's hands and yet you're worrying yourself to death about all sorts of things? The truth is we, we need to know that God is with us and for us. And we need our minds renewed. But there are spiritual strongholds. And I believe, again, online and in the house, it may be that you are living in a home where the enemy has squatted in, not in you, not in even perhaps your people that you love, but there are spiritual strongholds that have been built up. There's some of you that are living with unsafe people that have built a wall and the enemy has just helped them concrete it in. But I want to tell you this morning, we're going to break some of those strongholds in the name of Jesus. I got out of bed this morning to prophesy that there is going to be a breakthrough in the house today for some of you as we stand to believe that God is the God of the breaking through and the deliverance of those that are bound by the enemy. Bless his wonderful name. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell at his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. Listen, you have to understand, God is not out to punish you. This man had got completely the wrong idea. Jesus hadn't come to torture him. Jesus had come to release him. And right now, some of you need to know, and I'm preaching the gospel because I know, we know, we know how many people are watching us online. And I know I keep referring to online, but some of you need to make a decision today for the living God. Some of your lives are in a mess and it's time to get born again. It's time to give Jesus your life and let him transform you from darkness into his marvellous light. You see, this man was frightened because he was in darkness and all of a sudden he was exposed to the light of the world. Aren't you glad this morning that the light of the world is among us? Well, even greater than that, which is something to cheer about, the light of the world is in us. Hallelujah. So as we go around our daily lives, even though people don't see it with their natural eyes, there is a light shining from us. There is a revelation of Christ in us by his Holy Spirit. And so when he saw this, this man saw him, he was frightened. But I want to tell you today that Jesus is the light of the world. And he told us to be also the light to the world. He told us not to put our lamp under a bucket. He said, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bucket. Instead, they go to the lampstand and he gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Listen, you need faith tomorrow to know that when you go to that work situation, that school situation, wherever you find yourself, that the light of the world is shining in us and through us. And expect to see situations changed. I, I don't think it's not that God is not willing. I just think most of the time we're just so deaf and blind to what he's already doing. 
He's working. We've said it last night. And we've said it so many times over these last few weeks. Even when we don't see it, he's working. He has plans and purposes that he has unfolded and unpacked. And we just need to get with a plan. And see that as we walk as children of the living God. Somebody prayed it in the prayer meeting this morning. You know what the scripture says? That the, the whole world, the whole of creation is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. We need to get out there and shine. We need to be good to people. But more than that, we don't, we're not called to be social workers. We're supposed to be those that declare without fear and favour the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because without his name and without his blood and without his cross, this world is lost and it's going to hell in a handbasket. There is absolutely nothing we can do to change the war in the Ukraine. There's absolutely nothing we could have done with the pandemic. But we know there was one thing when we preach the gospel, people's lives are changed for eternity. So let's get on making the main thing the main thing. And I'm encouraging you to bring people to church. I'm encouraging you to get to the prayer meetings. Because we need to pray that God is going to change the spiritual atmosphere of this town. You know, we are in a spiritual battle. And... There's no greater warfare sometimes that goes on in church because the enemy is resisting what God is wanting to do, isn't he? You know, I, I, it was funny because I was praying in another church some time ago and the Lord opened my eyes and I, I, and I, I nearly jumped out of my skin. I saw, I, I'm, I'm not taken to say, you know, I see things, okay? So when I tell you, I saw it, I saw it. I, I, I saw about a, a 16-foot demon in the corner of this church and I, I said to the Lord, what, what, what is he doing in here? He says, because, Steve, he doesn't go out into a field where there's nobody. He's prowling around where there is somebody. And you have to understand that there's a battle going on this morning. But thanks be to God, there's more for us than against us. And, you know, as the prophet says to his, uh, to his uh, he prayed so his servant eyes might be able to be seen. And as he opened his eyes, he saw, wow, look at the angel armies that are surrounding us. You know, the battle belongs to the Lord. But we are in a battle. Don't, don't get that wrong. And, you know, we, we need to make sure that we, we understand that we need to, the scripture says that we need to resist the enemy and he'll flee from us. See, our vision is this church exists for the manner of Sedgley. If you don't know the manner of Sedgley, go into Google this afternoon and do a search, put the manner of Sedgley. It was the ancient boundaries that stretch from the beacon up there right through to uh, the end by uh, Wombat Island down the road and across into Coesley and Bradley and down into Gornal. I believe the Holy Spirit has given us as a church jurisdiction over this manor. And there is a spiritual battle going on for the hearts and lives and souls of the people who are in it. And we as the people of God need to take a step forward. I've got, I've got the guys in the prayer meeting to pray today because, as you know, guys left All Saints and Barry over the road's gone and there are ministers but they're, they're sort of temporary or sharing lots of churches. And you know what they've been saying about me in town because Joe told me, I was really upset when Joe told me, you know. I went away on my own and Joe tells me something that really upsets me. I'm not going away with him again. You know what he said to me? He said, they say in, Steve, that you're the last man standing in Sedgley. Something rose up on the inside of me. And I want to make a faith declaration this morning. I am not the last man standing. There are going to be hundreds of young men and women that are going to stand behind us in the work of God here in Sedgley. And we are going to take some ground. You want the enemy to think we're the last man? I am not the last man standing. In the name of Jesus. And we need to take this spiritual ground. And that's why I want to encourage you. Again, it was said in the prayer meeting this morning, you know, this is, this, the, these times of intercession are the ones that break up the fallow ground and, and change the spiritual atmosphere. Every revival there has ever been on the face of the earth has come through prayer and intercession. And we declare ourselves to be a house of prayer. So as I told you the other week, I don't want to be done under the Trench Description Act. We need to be praying people. So first Tuesday in the month, third Tuesday in the month, the Zooms will be in between for those that like to Zoom. But the first and third uh, Tuesdays of the month, I want you to put them in your diary as if it was the most important meeting that you will ever go to. Uh, and we, never mind 23 of us being here Tuesday. I, I bet, bet 55 of us being here every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, and breaking some strongholds. Because as we pray, God will move. I have got no doubt about that. And, you know, we need to take ground. We do not want to shrink. We do not want to be those who are pushed back by the enemy. Have you ever seen those Lord of the Rings films? I don't know how they made them. It must have took them years and years and years. With all of those thousands of troops fighting at Helm's Deep and chucking boulders and spears and stuff. We're in a battle. 
But I want to tell you this morning, the battle is won already. Christ has already won the battle. We're not fighting for the victory this morning. We're fighting from the victory. We are instigating what Jesus has already won. We're, we need to occupy the territory now. The battle has been won. The back of the enemy has been broken. Death has been put to death. And now we are peddlers of hope and preachers of faith. And we want to see God move, don't we? And we want to start to see ground taken in Sedgley in the name of Jesus. Some of you are saying it's pretty dark out there. It was pretty dark in Jesus' day as well. Pretty dark in the life of this man. But when the light of the world shines, the darkness has to flee. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. He replied, because there's many of us. And he begged him again not to send them out of the area. See, the enemy is on the back foot and we are on the victory side. But, you know, here's the, here's the thing is, the enemy is strong, but he has no authority. Should tell you why? Because Jesus said this, all authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on the earth. So the enemy, whatever he takes, whatever strongholds he puts up, whatever stuff he does in the life of our church, our family, our loved ones, he is usurping authority. He's taking that which does not belong to him. Well, we know he's a thief anyway. The scripture also says that he goes around like a roaring lion. He didn't say he is a roaring lion. He says he pretends he is. Again, he's good at deceit. But I want to tell you this morning, there is a lion. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he roars, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So the enemy may assume himself as a lion. He's just a pussycat with no teeth. Okay? But we are serving the lion of the tribe of Judah. I, I love the line, the witch in the wardrobe, if you ever get a chance to watch it, if you haven't watched it before. When Aslam shakes his mane and he roars, I, I want to hide under the settee. <laughs> How much more? Aren't you so glad this morning? What a wonderful saviour we serve. He's the lamb that gave his life for us, sacrificially. But yet at the same time, he's God Almighty. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he will prevail. He will prevail. The enemy is strong, but he has no authority. Listen to the scriptures. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And Paul says this, I'm convinced. He's not saying, I'm thinking about it, and I, I, it might be this way. He goes, oh, look, I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What he's saying is this. Hell and all its demons can throw itself against you, but God's with us. And we are not going to lose. We are more than conquerors. That's a strange saying, isn't it? More than conquerors. Why are we more than conquerors? Because we didn't have to do any of the fighting. Jesus did it all. He paid the supreme price. He took the Stuff that was written against us upon the cross. We saw that on Good Friday and he nailed it to the cross. And he disarmed the power and rulers and he, he made a public spectacle of them. And so now we're more than conquerors because he has conquered. And we just sit around in the grace that which he's now placed us in. We're in a wonderful position as believers this morning. I don't think we realise how privileged we are. When there's so many people out there struggling to find identity trying to find out who they truly are. You know, it's, you know in school now, it's, it's, it's not normal to be normal. But I, I want to tell you this morning, I am glad that I have found my identity, not in Steve, but in Christ. We've been singing it this morning, in Christ alone. My hope is found in Christ alone. My identity is found. I am special, not because I'm special, but because he deemed me enough, loved me enough to buy me with his own precious blood. I am of value to the living God this morning, and so are you. Paul wants to understand, us to understand the victorious position that we are in and the victory now that has been won over the demonic realm. 
The scripture says he begged Jesus again not to send them out into the area. The enemy does not want to leave this area. He doesn't want to go easy. You know, it's almost like that game of, uh, have you ever been to Blackpool? And uh, on, on some of the Pleasure Beach and, and some of the amusement arcades, they have that game Whack-A-Mole. Have you seen it? The mole pops his head up and you get a mallet and you hit it. It's a fun game. And, and, and then he pops his head up and whack it again. Whack-A-Mole. That's like the devil, you know, he, he pops up and you deal with him, he seems to pop up again. He doesn't want to leave. But I believe this morning that we can break strongholds in this town. That there, are, there are strongholds, I believe, that have been built up over hundreds of years. Now, he, hear me very carefully because I'm, I'm not one of these kind of preachers that's wild and wacky. I, I just want to tell you, I, I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm not into the stupidity. But I will tell you this, there, there's been witchcraft... There's been sorcery, there's been all sorts of things done on that beacon on the top of that hill for many, many centuries. And therefore there are strongholds in Sedgley that have been built up. And we're not fighting flesh and blood. So we're seeing people and they're resistant to the gospel and you think they don't want to know. No, their eyes are blinded by the darkness that has been produced by the enemy. But you know what? It's time for us to break the strongholds and let the light shine through. And so let me tell you, get to the prayer meetings, get praying at home. Uh, J. John t told a fantastic story yesterday, and I, I kind of leave you with this, because the responsibility to shine the light lies with us. Uh, J. John yesterday morning told a story just before we left the conference. Him and his wife pray every morning for 40 people, friends, neighbours, colleagues, people that don't know Jesus. And they've been praying for this one girl in particular who was his cousin's lodger, and uh, four or five times he, he said to his wife, I must go and see this young lady and pray for her and tell her about the love of Jesus. I, I just feel that I should do. But every time he went to, he knew it was an hour's journey there and an hour's journey back. And, and he, he felt that, that three hours out of a minister's day, he, he was busy. He, and even though, the, even though he said he got a quiver in the liver from the Holy Spirit, anybody have a quiver in the liver from the Holy Spirit? You know, a, a poke. A poke in the back from the Holy Ghost. You know, he felt that, but, and he, and, but he did nothing about it. Until finally he said to his wife, well, look, I, I, I feel compelled, I must, must go. And he said, I will go tomorrow. And that night on the six o'clock news, the newsreader said, Amy Winehouse took her own life today. He said, four times the Holy Spirit prompted me to go. And he said, I, I'm not sure that she went into eternity ever here in the gospel, the responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, is ours today to shine the light of the glorious gospel into people that so desperately need him. Now, you might look at some people and say they're beyond redemption. Nobody's beyond redemption. I tell you what, the precious blood of Christ was shed to redeem every single human being on the face of the earth that will put their faith and trust in him. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care how many people they've killed. I don't, many, I don't care how many demons that are possessing them. Once they come to Jesus, their chains will fall off and their hearts will be set free. <laughs> no condemnation, now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head and clothed in righteousness. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim my crown through Christ my own. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Time to break down the strongholds in prayer and declaration of faith and just confessing just boldly and without fear the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Bless the Lord. Bless. I just feel that, that some of you today are struggling with strongholds personally in life. I'm not talking about the general day-to-day -day stuff. Boy, we all go through situations. We've all got relatives who play up. We've all got problems with not enough money. We've all got issues around health. I'm not talking about those, but I'm talking about what you know to be something that needs breaking. I I'm, I've got my eyes closed. If you want to stand, if, if, actually, if you want to stand, I'm not even going to look up. You want prayer after you know now? Our, our prayer corner is always open after the end of the service. Or if you just want to lift your hand to heaven, whatever you want to do to respond to God this morning, I, 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 don't, I don't need you to do that so I feel better about having preached a good word. It's nothing to do about preaching a good word, it's about preaching truth and letting it see, sink into your hearts and set you free. And some of you are going to wake up tomorrow morning and go, wow, I need to do something about that. But some of you need to respond in this moment. 
So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we break strongholds of the enemy in Jesus' name. Where there is dis-ease, where there are spiritual forces at work that we cannot see, we bind them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have the authority, you've given us the authority to bind the strong man. And we bind him right now in the name of Jesus. We declare over our lives and our family the incredible name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Son of the Most High God. Even this man recognized that you were the Son of the Most High God. We declare your blood. Again, like the children of Israel, we put the blood upon the doorposts and the lintels of our properties and we declare breakthrough in the name of Jesus that the angel of death cannot and will not affect us or touch our lives in any way. For those that are spiritually blind, we pray you'll break that blindness off them today. And that many of us that we've been, we've been praying for other people, Lord, for those that have been praying. Lord, I pray that relatives, loved ones, husbands, wives, cousins, nephews, nieces, children, grandchildren will come to faith. In these next few days, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord in a final song. Take up the morning offering. We need to stack the first four rows as normal at the end, if you would. But this, this week, let's go out of our way to bind the enemy and shine the light of the glorious gospel from our lives in Jesus' name. Thanks, Steve. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just stand if we're able as we uh, sing our final song together. Cast my heart to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the curse. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy storm Messiah still and all alone oh praise the name Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Son of heaven rose again, O oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the name of the
Let's give me some praise. Hallelujah. Ura mara sea la nama sea la bodoro sea la landa de que descendo la bara bara sa la 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 descende descende de de. Oh, let the strongholds come tumbling down, Jesus, as we lift up your name. Hallelujah. Oh, risen, ascended, and glorified, King of the universe, we bless your name, O oh Lord. Oh, raba la 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 sea la 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 de descende de bu 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 sha. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The Lord would say there's, there's going to come a binding together of things that have been broken. Uh, there's, there's things that have been shattered and destroyed in your life and you have felt that they, they were unreconcilable and incomplete and that there's areas of your life that you feel that you cannot put back together again and the Lord would say to you don't try and do that in your own strength but let my Holy Spirit right now work in you to do a good work because I am the God of the reconciliation I am the God of the putting back together again I'm the God of the making all things new open your heart to me says the Lord today and in the opening of your heart you will find that I will begin to deal with you I, I want to do open heart surgery on you I want to show you things I want to reveal things to you you've been through a lot of hurt and disappointment but the Lord would say today there is a coming together and I am bringing all things together in my plans and purposes and you're going to stand in the light of my goodness not your disappointment but you will stand in the goodness of your God in these days that lie ahead so do not be fearful about the situations that you've gone through do not look back with regret and disappointment know that the Lord is with you in this moment and he's still fulfilling his plans bless the Lord isn't Jesus wonderful father I just pray this morning as we go that those words are ringing our ears that you want to continue to work in us pull down the strongholds that would bind this town pull down the strongholds that would hold us back and Lord let us be filled with the light of your glorious gospel and the joy of just knowing you. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength this week as we leave this place. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit fall upon us now and remain with us for always. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and God bless you.